What is going on, everybody? Assalamu alaikum. Sayyidina back again with another YouTube video. In today's YouTube video, I will be going over my favorite. And no, I do not say that lightly. I have used a ton of indicators lately, uh, not lately, sorry, throughout my entire career of day trading. Coming up on four years of day trading, it's been three and a half so far. And this is my favorite indicator to use. I'm going to explain why it's my favorite indicator to use. I'm going to explain how to use it. I'm going to explain multiple functionalities behind it, which is why I love it, right? It's not just a one-dimensional indicator that you use for one thing. It has multitude of uh, uses, and which is why I absolutely love it. So I don't say it lightly. When I say it's my favorite indicator, trust me, it is my favorite indicator. And so, yeah, I'm going to go over it. I'm going to explain the settings behind it. I'm going to explain everything behind it. This is actually my second time filming this video, guys, because the first time I filmed this video, I didn't necessarily like the way I was explaining it. Uh, not only that, but I don't know why it was kind of awkward. Uh, a lot of times what ends up happening with YouTube videos, I don't know if any of you have ever filmed the YouTube video, but if you haven't, uh, it's very awkward to film. It's very weird to just sit in a room and talk alone to like literally a camera. And so because of that, sometimes your brain can get a little bit like messed up and you know, the words don't come out the way you want them to. So this is my second time filming this video. If you appreciate all the effort I put in to all these YouTube videos, like the video, comment down below and subscribe to the channel. That being said, guys, let's get into today's video. So let me share my screen because obviously we have to hop on the charts and this is your USD. Uh, we're going to be looking at the one minute time frame, but honestly, hmm, we can just go to any time frame, but I'll go to the one minute because I have some trades played out on the one minute. And so I can show you guys exactly how I like to use. So the indicator is the 200 period exponential moving average. Now, more specifically, the 200 period EMA, right? Well, I'm not talking about the nine period, the 20 period, the 20, the 50, the 36 period, none of those, right? The 200 period EMA. My favorite indicator to use, right? It says indicator in white. For those of you guys that don't know, exponential moving averages, essentially what they do is that they take the average price of whatever value that you have inputted. So for instance, this is a 200 period exponential moving average. So what's going to end up happening is, is that if, for at this price point right over here, actually I can go to Bitcoin and because the market's open for Bitcoin and let's go on the 15 minute time frame. So on the 15 minute, uh, okay, on the, why, why is it like this? I don't know why it's blue. Uh, okay, let me go to a different Bitcoin then. Because for some reason this one is blue. Uh, okay, cool. This is a five minute time frame on Bitcoin, correct? And so what essentially this 200 period exponential moving average is saying is that oh, uh, with based on current price points, right? The average price of this candle, along with the last 199 candles, is at this price point, right? Now, why is this EMA lower than the current candle? Well, it's because the previous 200 candles were lower than current price. So it's going to be lower, right? It's the average. Now, the benefit with the exponential moving average in comparison to other moving averages, such as the simple moving average or just a normal moving average, a smoothing moving average, there's a bunch of different uh, moving averages. The benefit that I personally really like of the exponential moving average is that it weighs it heavily, it weighs the more recent candles more heavily than the previous ones. What that essentially means is that this candle this candle, this candle, this candle are going to be weighed a lot more heavily than these candles, right? Now, the benefit of that is that when it's taking into account the average price and giving you this display, right? It is showing you more current price data. It's taking more current price data into consideration in comparison to the more, um, the more past price data, right? Because as you guys know, past price data is good, right? We can use it for a variety of reasons. However, it is not the best, right? Because the past does not indicate what's happening right now, nor is it going to indicate what is happening in the future. It can be used to guess, but it's not going to give you the most clear picture. The best thing to do when interpreting what is going on in the future, which is essentially what day traders do, is to look at what present current price action is telling you, right? That's why I really like the EMA because it focuses a lot more heavily on the current price action in comparison to previous price action, right? And you know, I can change the settings as well. Um, if I go to the, let's say 20 period moving average right now, it just weighs the past 20 candles in comparison to the last 200 candles. So it's giving me the average price point of the last 200 candles. And as you guys can see, right? Once we start to close below the average price point, the curve starts to go down. Now. One of the things you can see very heavily is that the price tends to hover around this EMA, right? And this is the 20 period EMA, but regardless, price is hovering around that EMA, right? And over here though, it looks a little bit more choppy, right? This is why I'm going to use the 200 period EMA because the 200 EMA period EMA is a lot more clean, right? It shows you the overall price action of the last 200 period. It's showing you an overall trend, right? What is happening? And as you guys can see, overall, it's flat, right? Which means that there's no trend, right? So this is what the first use of the 200 period exponential moving average is going to be. And we're going to switch back to the USD chart on the one minute time frame. 
for this. Come on, cool. So uh, let's go. To, we're gonna go start on Monday. Um, actually, you know, I'll just pick some random dice, man. Cool. So this is random data. Uh, actually, this is a London session what I trade. So I'll just go back to the session that I trade. But one of the first uses of the two hundred period exponential moving average is a trend filter. Now, what the heck just happened? Uh, now you can use the two hundred period exponential. Oh, I press the number. Just change the time frame accidentally, but you can use different exponential moving averages as a trend filter too. You can use a 50 period, you can use a 20 period, right? But the 200 period exponential moving average is going to showcase to you what the longer term trend is, right? Now, it's not showing you what the medium term trend is. It's not showing you what the shorter term trend is. It's showing you what the long term trend is. This is good because when we're trading, we want to be trading with the trend. A lot of you guys that follow me, a lot of you guys that are using the strategies that I've showcased or using any strategy, most likely you are going to be using uh, a strategy that follows the long-term trend. Why? Because as the saying goes, the trend is your friend. It is a lot more easy to trade with the trend than to trade against it, right guys? So the total period exponential moving average is a very objective way to, and from now on, I'm just gonna say EMA. And when I refer to EMA, just know that I'm talking about the 200 period EMA, right? That is showcased in this video that I'm explaining right now. So the EMA that we're going to be using gives you an objective way to figure out what the trend is, all right? Right now, right, there's two rules that you have to follow. If the price is below the EMA, we're in a downtrend. If price is above the EMA, we're in an uptrend. Right now, right, is price above or below the EMA? We're below, right? And so because we're below, what are we looking for? We're looking for sell opportunities, right? We're bearish, we're in a downtrend. And as you guys can see, right, throughout the entire time we're below the price, uh, below the EMA, what ends up happening? Price continues to go lower and lower. And throughout the time when we're above the exponential moving average, right, what is happening? Price tends to go higher and higher. Right. So as you guys can see, it's a pretty good filter of trend direction. Right. It gives you a very, very objective and easy way to spot trend filters. Right. What What is the trend and what direction should I trade with? Now, that is the first use. And again, I said it was multi use. Right. There's multiple functionality behind it, which is why I absolutely love this exponential moving average. Right. Now, this indicator is amazing because of the fact that it can also be used as a dynamic level of support and resistance. What are support and resistance? If you guys don't know, let me just mark out very few levels. So resistance are areas of price where price reaches and then it's like a ceiling essentially, right? So it's a level that price reaches but cannot break past, right? Kind of like if you were to reach the top and touch the ceiling of your house, you're not gonna be able to go past that, right? Because the ceiling is stopping you. So price ends up reaching these resistance levels and starts to, since it's a ceiling, it can't go past it after it reaches the highest level, which is AKA, the resistance level, the ceiling level, it starts to go down, right? So these levels, you can kind of anticipate that once price reaches them, we're probably going to go down, right? Now the levels of support are exactly the opposite of that, right? There's a level of support right here. Um, when price reaches the levels of support, such as this, right? What ends up happening is, is that price gets supported, right? Again, the floor is your support, right? The floor is the lowest price point that can potentially end up happening. Um, Sorry, some of us, I just got a notification. But the right, so after price reaches these floors, these levels of support, what's the lowest price point that price can reach? So what ends up happening? It starts to go above. And as you guys can see, what ends up happening? We go from resistance to support, to resistance, to support, to resistance, to support, all right? Now, these levels that I've just plotted out, these gray levels, this one and this one, are very static levels of support and resistance. They're never changing. Now, the issue with static levels of support and resistance, right? Although they can be very good to use, and quite frankly, I do use them myself all the sometimes, right? They are using past data. Like I said in the beginning of the video, past data is good, but it's not the best, right? Because guess what, guys? What ends up happening with past data is that it works until it doesn't. And yes, you can say that about everything, right? But the more you support and resistance levels are tested, the weaker they become, right? This area, right, was a level of resistance over here. Uh, cool. This area was a level of resistance over here, right? And guess what? It breaks through. And now guess what? It starts acting as a level of support. But guess what? It's been tested so many times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's been tested so many times that the next time it reaches support, guess what? It just breaks below and it never gets tested again, right? These are very static levels of support and resistance. Now this is where the EMA comes in. It's a very dynamic level of support and resistance. Traders will use this EMA to figure out what the average price is. Because when you're around the average price, right? That means it's fair value, right? Over here, is this fair value? No. It price is overextended. But once we start to reach the average price, right? If your trader sees this entire move, what are they thinking? Price is bullish. Are they gonna get in? No, because if they start buying over here, they're buying at the highs. You wanna buy at the lows, right? So if a trader knows that the price is bullish and the EMA is showing you the average price, but when price gets to the average price, it becomes fair value. So people start buying. That's why you see 
that as soon as price starts to reach the EMA line, what ends up happening? You get a large bullish movement up, right? And what happens? What is what is it called? What is it, what is the area called where price reaches and then starts to show a lot of bullish momentum from? It's called support. And again, you see the opposite happening over here, right? Let's take this entire move, for example, right? This entire move was bearish, right? If a trader sees this, they're going to want to sell. But are they selling over here? Are they going to sell over here? No, because that's selling at the lows. You don't sell at the lows, you sell at the highs, right? And you buy back at the lows. So guess what? A trader is going to wait for price to come back to the average price point, aka the EMA. Now, once price is at the average price point, the EMA, right, it's fair value again. So they start selling. And that's why you see when price is very close to the EMA, guess what ends up happening? You see a sharp sell-off, right? So that's why I like to use this EMA a lot. And as you guys can see, it works really well. I just showed you a lot of bullish examples. There's a lot of bullish examples. One, two, three, four, five, right? So it ends up being a dynamic level of support and resistance, right? When price is reaching these, the EMA and starts to reject off it, you can kind of figure out where it's going to go. If we're below the EMA line, we're bearish. And now guess what? Price is reaching this, showing rejections, showing bearish momentum. What does that mean? If the trend is down and price is showing rejections, and we're at a level of resistance, a dynamic level of resistance. Dynamic essentially just means that it's continuously changing, hence what the EMA is, right? And we're showing bearish momentum, we're going down. It's as simple as that, guys, right? It's literally, you don't have to make it as any more complicated, right? And as you guys can see, it works pretty well, right? As a trend frontal and as a level of dynamic resistance, right? I mean, as you guys can see, bam, one, two, three, four. I mean, multiple taps, right, guys, where it gets closer to fifth. I mean, come on, guys, sixth. Right, over here, again, this is a failure. Again, not every strategy is going to be 100% perfect, right? And this is a failure. And over here, we get a bullish run. So that works out. That works out. Um, That works out a little bit. You probably lose anyways. Uh, Retest, bearish trend. I mean, come on, guys. It works amazingly, right? As you guys can see from the, like, ten, the 10 examples I just showed you super quickly, right? And I'm not giving you guys any like super crazy cherry-picked examples, right? I just started scrolling, right? So I've showed you consolidation. I've showed you trends. This indicator works amazingly. Now, of course, you shouldn't just be training it by yourself. Can you? Yes. Or you shouldn't be training this indicator just by itself. You can if you want to. However, I don't recommend it. I like adding other indicators. I like adding other key levers uh, or other levers in the market. Right. One of the ways that you can trade it, the way I liked, uh, let me just explain to you guys this. Um, these two trades that it took. This was a one to three. Uh, I don't know why I marked it out of one to one, one five. But yeah. So these are two indicators right over here. Right. Do you have the absolute strength in the water tower explosion indicator? If you want a be showcasing this entire strategy, you can go back to my previous videos and watch this entire uh watch the entire video where I showcase this entire strategy and I go over it, right? But over here, what do you see? We see a bounce from the trend line, we see that it's retesting. And again, a retest doesn't have to be uh completely it actually touching the EMA line, right? It, if it's just close enough, guys, this counts as a retest to me. This will count out as a retest to me, right, guys? So what ends up happening? We get close, we retest the trend line, what do we get? We get a absolute strength Instagram confirmation. What are Tara giving you the volume confirmation? And what else do we see? We see that this is a pretty good level of a minor resistance level. Now, that was the reason why I lost right the trade. It was a minor resistance level. I like to trade off key levels that are strong. This one was a minor. I ended up losing the trade. Was it a good trade anyways? Yes, guys. Was it the best trade? Um, I would say no. Right. So hence why, hence why the second trade that I go with, right, it ends up winning really well. Good because as you guys can see, very strong static level of support. Price breaks, price retests once. This is the second retest, right? Again, we're retesting the trend line as well. So it's retesting not only a static level of resistance, but also a dynamic level of resistance. Same confirmation, absolute strength Instagram, water tower explosion. We even have a trend line that you can place. I don't really like trend lines because they're pretty um they're pretty uh what is it called? Subjective. They're very subjective, so I don't like them. But again, uh, you know, I took the trade. I saw the bearish momentum, saw the rejections, took it, bam, win. So, you know, one win, one loss. It is what it is, guys. Uh, still profitable for the day. And if you guys are wondering why I went super quickly, because the entire point is not to break down my trades that I took and won or lost. It's to showcase the EMA. So that's how I'd use the EMA. Again, you don't have to use it like this. You can just use it based off price asking, you know, breaks and retests, trend lines, Fibonacci, whatever. But I would recommend highly that you guys test this strategy or uh, test this indicator out and implement it in your trading. Again, if you, you don't have to, if you don't want to, trade the way you want to, right? But a lot of people do not like trading with indicators for whatever reason. They say that only beginners use indicators. They say that you, if you trade with indicators, you're not an actual trader. Um, All these things are just excuses, guys. They were just not profitable using indicators themselves, which is why they can't, they, which is why they hate using indicators and say these things, right? As long as you can make money from the market, guys, 
who cares the way you trade? You can trade with the freaking astrology signs for all I care, right? Whether it's ICT, indicators, price action only, short patterns, candlestick patterns, whatever way you trade, guys, as long as you can pull money from the market, that's perfectly fine. For me, I do like indicators. I've tried other methods of trading. I've tried support and resistance, uh, key level retests and all that jazz, right? Using only that with no indicators, clean charts, stuff like that. I've tried ICT methods. I really just like trading with indicators. They're very objective. They're really cool. I, of course, add some other stuff to them, like um, candlestick pattern and stuff, but indicators alone can make you profitable, right? So this is my favorite indicator. Uh, so yeah, I do advise you guys, if you guys are struggling, please test this out, try it out. Again, this is not financial advice, but yeah, a bit of a longer video, guys, but I really want to explain to you guys how I use it, the functionalities, why I really like the indicator. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. With that being said, guys, peace out.